Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about right triangle theorem. A very useful mathematical formula that's used in uh, many of the construction and building trades is the right triangle theorem. And that theorem uh, states the relationship between the three sides of every right triangle. Now, a right triangle is a triangle that has an angle of 90 degrees. So when you see a symbol like this at, a, at an angle, a little square, that represents, that's telling you that it's a 90 degree angle or a right angle. So right angle is 90 degrees. And if you do have a right angle in the triangle, it's called a right triangle. And the relationship between the three sides in a right triangle is always the same but this relationship is only true for a right triangle. The relationship is this side squared, a squared plus b squared will equal c squared. You can interchange a and b, it doesn't matter which side you call a and which side you call b, but side c is always the side opposite the right angle. It's also called the hypotenuse. So you can interchange these two sides, but side C has to be the side opposite the right angle. Typically you'll know two sides and often in the construction or building trades, you're gonna know A and B and you're gonna be finding C. So we're gonna talk about how we use this theorem to find C and we're also going to use it to find either A or B when we know C and one of these other sides. So let's take a look at some examples. In our first example, we know that this length is two meters, this length is five meters, we know that this is a right angle, so we want to find side C or question mark, so we're gonna call this C. My formula says that A squared plus B squared will equal C squared, so I'm gonna plug in A, which is two, B, which is five, and I'm gonna find C. First of all, I'm gonna square two and get four. I'm gonna square five and get 25. I add those two amounts up, I get 29 will equal c squared. And in order to solve for c, I take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of c squared, that just gives me c. And when I take the square root of 29, I get 5.385. So c will be equal to 5.385 meters. It doesn't matter what unit your lengths are measured in, they could be inches, they could be feet, they could be centimeters, they could be meters. This is the way you would do it for any units. Just understand that all of the lengths have to be the same unit. Your right triangle can be positioned any way as well. So as long as your triangle has a right angle, it's a right triangle. And the two sides that form that right angle are A and B, doesn't matter which is which, but the side opposite that angle, that right angle is C. Let's find C in this example. So we're gonna have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So four squared plus three squared will equal C squared. 16 plus nine equals C squared. C squared equals 25. And when I take the square root of both sides, I get C equals five. Because these two lengths are in feet, then this will be in feet. You've probably heard of a three, four, five triangle. And what they're referring to is this nice set of numbers that works with your right triangle theorem. You can easily use this set of numbers to check whether a corner is square. If you measure three units along one side, so it could be feet, it could be meters, it could be inches, and then four units along the other side, then if you were to measure between those two points and get five, you know that it's a 90 degree angle. If it's less than five, the angle is less than 90 degrees. If this length is greater than five, then the angle is greater than 90 degrees. So it helps you determine whether you have a square or a right angle corner. Another useful piece of information is that you could double all of these numbers and it would also work. For example, if I doubled this length and this length, 
this length actually would be double as well. And we can check that, six squared plus eight squared equals c squared. So six squared is 36, eight squared is 64. 36 plus 64 is 100. So c would equal 10 feet. So when you're working with the three, four, five triangle, Understand, first of all, that that's going to be the length of the hypotenuse of the longest side or the side opposite the right angle. But if you double each of these numbers, you still have a right triangle. You could triple each of those numbers. You could quadruple them and so on. So very useful triangle in the building and construction trades. Let's do an example now of a right triangle where we know the hypotenuse and one of the sides and we want to find the other side. So in this triangle, my right angle is here, so this is length C. This is the side opposite the right angle. This is the hypotenuse. It's going to be your, your C in your formula. And we can call this either A or B, and then this would be the other letter. So we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. A squared will be 100 squared. We don't know B. And C is 150, so C squared will be 150 squared. So we can multiply these out, 150 squared. So we'll have 10,000 plus B squared equals 22,500. We want to solve for B squared, so we're going to subtract 10,000 from this side. And whatever we do to this side of the equation, we have to do the same thing to the other side. So B squared will be equal to 12,500. I just subtracted 10,000 from both sides. Now to find B, I take the square root of both sides. And I get 111.8 unit is centimeters. So we can use our theorem to find either A, B, or C, as long as we know the other two values. Besides using the right triangle theorem and your 3, 4, 5 triangle to find out if a corner is square or not, the right triangle theorem is used in roofing where your length A can be considered the rise, length B can be considered the run, and then C is what's called the line length. It's not going to be the total rafter length because it doesn't take into consideration the overhang. So you, you would need to know how far out from the building that overhang extends. And then if you use that amount for your horizontal distance and use your right triangle theorem, you would get the total rafter length. Similarly with stairs, to calculate your stringer length, you would need to know the rise and the run, and then you could calculate your stringer length. You could also use it to find what diagonal length needs to be used for a support. So there are many applications of using the right triangle theorem in trades and especially in construction trades. In my next video, I'm going to talk about special right triangles, ones that have angles of 45 or 30 or 60 degrees. And I'm going to talk about some special numbers that you can use when you're working with those particular right triangles.